Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 85th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. To start off, I wanted to preface this episode by saying if you want more details on anything I talk about in this episode, then just be sure to check down below in the more info because I have posts to everything that I discuss and more details on particular topics will be listed there. To start off, I wanted to talk about the iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak status. Now last week, Pod2G provided two updates and the first one was just saying that him and the team that he's been working with have successfully discovered all of the exploits required to perform an untethered jailbreak. And the next update was him just saying that he has bypassed a security method that's implemented into iOS known as ASLR or address space layout randomization. So with those two updates, it led to the conclusion that an untethered jailbreak would be released sometime in the foreseeable future. However, as we learned three days ago on the 24th, that might not be the case. Through a series of updates, Pod2G informed us that he has absolutely no clue when the iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak will be released. He said it could be out as early as one month from now, or it might never be released. And some people mistakenly interpreted that as him saying that this is the end of untethered jailbreaks as we know it, and there will never be an untethered jailbreak again in the future. That is not what he meant. He simply meant that he might save the exploits that they've discovered for iOS 5.1 and use it for a future firmware, presumably iOS 6, so that they can save the exploits and so that they don't quote unquote waste them. And two days after that update, or yesterday on the 26th, Pod2G initiated a poll on his website with two different options. The first option is to have him implement the exploits into an iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak and get a utility out as soon as possible. And the second option is is for him to actually save all of the exploits for iOS 6. Now the post does have a link to his blog where the poll is located. However, just be sure to read the post over first because it has some really great details about both of the different options and it kind of goes into depth on them. So after you've read through and you fully understand, just be sure to go over to Pod2G's blog and vote. Right now there's currently five days left until the end of the poll and hopefully once it's over, Pod2G will provide another update. So just be sure to stay tuned for that and all future updates regarding the iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak and future jailbreaks. Now earlier this week, a method was discovered to unlock your iPhone or use it on other carriers that aren't officially supported. And the method simply tricks iTunes activation into thinking that your SIM card is official. Now it accomplished this through a couple of different workarounds with SAM or subscriber artificial module. Users were able to successfully unlock any jailbroken iPhone with any firmware on any baseband. However, since then, Apple has updated their activation service and this method is no longer valid. So so unfortunately, in the future, users looking to unlock will not be able to unlock with this method. However, if you have already unlocked, you're good and you can re-download your activation tickets if you need to, hopefully for a future firmware so you can still retain that unlock for that specific SIM card. And while this has definitely been the first software-based unlock in quite some time, hopefully we'll start to see more software-based unlocks in the near future. And of course, just be sure to stay tuned because I know I haven't really covered unlocks too much in the past, but I'm going to start covering them more in the future. So again, just be sure to stay tuned for all unlock related videos. Moving on, on the 23rd, Intel released 13 new Ivy Bridge processors in their core series. So these Ivy Bridge processors are totally revamped over the older, now outdated Sandy Bridge processors. They utilize a 22 nanometer advanced manufacturing procedure and they feature new Trigate technology. Now these new 13 processors are primarily for desktops and some of the higher quality laptops. And it said that Ivy Bridge variants for a smaller laptops will be making an appearance later this spring. Moving on to the next story, a proposed next generation iPhone home button was leaked on a China-based retailer known as TVC Mall. Now the design of these home buttons look almost identical to that of the home buttons used on current iOS-based devices. However, the enclosure around the home buttons is actually what's different, and there are more details on that in the post. Now, whether or not these home buttons are legitimate, that's still up in the air. When you look at the white home button, the square with round and corners in the middle that's been on all iOS devices actually looks slightly off because on the white iPhones, iPads, and iPod touches, it's kind of a gray color, but in this picture, 
it looks slightly black. And it's unknown whether or not that's just because of the way the picture was taken or because it actually is indeed black. Next up, the other day on the 24th, Apple announced their earnings and sales figures for the second quarter of their 2012 fiscal year. And I've got to say, while their earnings aren't quite as lucrative as their first quarter earnings, it's still a great accomplishment because according to reports, this is the best second quarter that Apple has ever had. They reported $11.6 billion in net profit off of $39.2 billion in revenue, which is absolutely amazing. And what's shocking is that the second quarter for this year, 2012, is nearly double what they earned for the second quarter of 2011. A day later on the 25th, Apple announced that their annual Worldwide Developers Conference, more commonly known as WWDC, will be held this year from June 11th to the 15th. And early that morning, tickets went on sale for $1,599 with one requirement. Whoever was buying the ticket had to actually be a registered developer. And just two hours after going on sale, tickets were completely sold out, whereas last year it took WWDC about 12 hours to completely sell out. So with iOS 6 and OS X Mountain Lion scheduled to be key points at WWDC 2012, it will definitely be a week to look forward to. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned for full coverage on this year's Worldwide Developers Conference. Next up, the question of whether or not anti-piracy and anti-resale measures would be beneficial to next generation consoles came up in a recent interview with Crytek's Director of Creative Development, and he said it would be absolutely awesome. Now, while it definitely would be good for game developers and game publishers, he's certainly missing the other side of things, and everything is detailed in the post that's down below. And to wrap up the news for this episode, today ArenaNet opened Guild Wars 2 servers for their first beta weekend event. Now, if you want more details on this beta, future betas, and how you can participate in the beta events, then just be sure to check out the post. And finally, the new iPad giveaway that I'm hosting in collaboration with the members of iPod Uplink and Jailbreak Nation will be ending around the beginning of next week. So just be sure to enter the giveaway if you haven't already, and I'll have a link down below in the more info to do so, as well as links for everything I discussed in today's episode. Just be sure to rate this video up if you liked it, and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. For the question of the day, let me know down down below in the comment section what you guys think, whether or not Pod2G should save the exploits for iOS 6, or if he should just implement them into a jailbreak as quickly as possible and release an untethered jailbreak utility for iOS 5.1. So if you want, just be sure to answer that question in the comment section or on the corresponding post. And don't forget, if you want to stay updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me in one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.